The United Nations established a day uh, against trafficking in persons uh, on the 30th of July every year. And uh, what can we do against trafficking in persons? Trafficking means extreme exploitation. Exploitation of people, women, men, so many girls and boys in uh, inhuman and degrading conditions, sometimes amounting to slavery uh, and forced labor. What can we do? First of all, we have to be aware that the vast majority of trafficked persons are migrants and refugees. They are particularly vulnerable to exploitation simply because they lost their beloved ones, uh, they lost their families, their community ties, uh, whatever is uh, uh, our social identity, uh, whatever is a social protection network. So they fall prey to traffickers and exploiters very easily. So the first thing we can do, and everybody should, uh, is to stand against the public poisonous discourse uh, on migration, um, against uh, xenophobic and even racist uh, approaches, uh, although uh, sometimes very well dissimulated, and against uh, restrictive migration policies because people become even more vulnerable being in an irregular situation uh, in a country of, of transit or in a destination country. Secondly, we know that people uh, migrating for any possible reason, but there is always a compelling reason uh, to oblige people to, to leave their, uh, whatever they have, uh, whatever they love. Uh, people during their previous journey are subject to torture, rape, extortion, uh, sexual exploitation, labor exploitation, other, any kind of other violation of human rights. And we have seen that this happens in Libya. Uh, we have seen that uh, torture happens on a regular basis in detention centers in Libya. We have seen uh, slave auctions. We have seen women exploited in so-called connection houses and uh, uh, arriving in Europe uh, uh, severely traumatized uh, simply to be exploited uh, uh, in uh, European countries. Libya is not a country where people can be returned. If a state uh, returned someone in Libya, this would be a violation of uh, international human rights law. Uh, and we have to think that uh, uh, this is not different if uh, it is the Libyan Coast Guard uh, re returning people to the to the Libyan coasts. Uh, uh, the, the Libyan Coast Guard has proved uh, to be unaware of the migrants' rights uh, and eventually causing uh, um, further harm in, to people in precarious situations at sea. We have to be aware that the vast majority of people rescued at sea uh, have been rescued by NGO, NGO-run vessels. And so what we can do, and everybody should, uh, is to stand by NGOs helping people and uh, helping them to, uh, to uh, arrive in a port of safety. And we have to think that denying this possibility is, again, a violation of maritime law. Finally, uh, we have seen uh, from our experience that uh, when people are receive help, when people uh, have a possibility uh, of an alternative, of a viable alternative for life, they find their way to freedom and social uh, dignity. We can become actors of this process, uh, which is a process toward uh, freedom and social inclusion uh, of people that have been subject in the past to exploitation. And this means to provide them, if possible, with decent, uh, with, with a, with decent work,
provide them with the possibility, possibility to uh, associate themselves, organize themselves in uh, associations and trade unions to stand for economic and social rights for everybody. And this is because when exploitation is considered normal for a certain sector of the population, if, it is con if exploitation is con considered normal for migrants, exploitation becomes a systemic component of our society and it becomes a threat for all. So my main message in this day and also in the context of the UN Global Compact of Migration uh, is the following. Even in difficult times, inclusion, not exclusion, is the answer.